Welcome back everyone to Buenos Aires, Argentina. We are here today in, well down by the, by the port actually, Buenos Aires. And we're here in front of the immigration building. This is the main office for the immigration services here. And today we're going to go inside up to the top floor because uh, up there they have a museum, an immigration museum. And I really want to see it because uh, immigration very important to the history of Argentina. So, let's go. Before we do that, I just want to say a real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So before we go in, I do want to mention, yeah, immigration, extremely important. To, uh, to the history of Argentina. It's very windy out here. But uh, Argentina is a country of immigrants. It is in that way very similar to the United States, where I'm from. And it's one of the things that I really like about Argentina. I've mentioned this in previous videos. We've done a lot of videos about different uh, communities and the history of immigration of different peoples to Argentina, right? not just from different countries, but also people from like multiple countries, but of different religions, because Argentina is a predominantly Catholic country. But that said, there are a decently large population of Muslims here in Argentina. There is a decently large population of Jews here in Argentina. And we've done videos about both of those, as well as videos about like German immigrants here to Argentina, Italian immigrants to Argentina, Spanish immigrants who came after the, uh, the independence from Spain and uh, and lots of others so it's really important that uh, we come here to this museum to see the history of immigration because we've, we've focused so much on it in the different videos we've made about histories of different like peoples coming and immigrating here and I didn't even know this was here um, actually this was a suggestion from our buddy Charlie XP and uh, I'm really excited to check it out because like I said the, uh, the importance of immigration in the history of Argentina cannot really be overstated. Argentina is, is a very diverse and unique culture, and it is so because of the many, many, many decades and centuries of, uh, of immigration here. So, let's, uh, let's head across and figure out how we, uh, how we get up into this museum, because it's actually in the building with the immigration offices. So there's probably going to be a lot of like people here doing immigration office stuff and we're going to have to figure out our way to get into the museum. But I think it's free and once we get there we'll check back in. So the door to enter is around here on the right side of the museum if you ever come here uh, or the right side of the building. So like if you're facing the building you go to the right and around the right side there's a door here with an elevator. You can head in and head up the elevator here. I went in the wrong door. I went in the, the door for like immigration services. Clearly that was not the right place. And uh, I realized almost immediately that was not the right place. But if you are here in, uh, in Buenos Aires and like for example you need to, um, I don't know, like extend uh, your visa because you want to stay longer, this is where you go to do it. Okay, up here, third floor and out the window here get a really good view of uh, the harbor where right across there those uh, past the uh, the uh, old sailing ship there are those ferries and those are buquebus Buque, buquebus those are ferries that go across the estuary to like um, to, to Uruguay and the terminal for them is like right over there so you can catch a ferry from here and then this building right here it's like a white building down there is the armada which i think is actually like a naval i don't know training building school something like that it definitely has to do with the navy um this sailing ship here is flagged has like the argentine flag i think it's a naval like sailing ship um that they protect uh, like i guess like train on I think, because when we came in, the woman at the the gate, the security guard, was like very adamant that we don't walk 
on that side and don't enter that building. Um, so I imagine it is like a naval military building. Anyway, we are here. Centro de Arte Contemporaneo in here and Museo de la Inmigración here. I'm gonna check out both of these things, honestly. Um, this um, art museum section, I think the whole um, uh, exhibit is about immigrants also, so we definitely wanna see this. But first, I'm gonna go in here to the Museo de la Inmigración. All the peoples from all different countries who have come here. Estadounidenses, like us. A timeline. Now this timeline I find very interesting actually because if you look, it has world history right like you know in napoleonic wars starting up there and it has it also argentine history alongside and the history of immigration alongside it so it's all three timelines all alongside each other so you get an idea of like what was happening in argentine history what was happening in the history of immigration in argentina and then what was happening in like uh, world in world history at the same time very very interesting so right here is some important very important time for Argentina in history it's kind of hard to see because it's like glass this timeline but right here Batalla de Caseros Battle of Caseros and 1853 the approval of the Constitution and the formation of the Confederation of uh, the Argentine Confederation this is basically the constitution that lays out the, the framework for the modern Argentine state, modern Argentine republic. And in that constitution, Article 25, sort of like um, sanction, uh, it, it encouraged immigration, officially encouraged immigration from Europe. So in the latter half of the 1800s, there was huge immigration boom from Europe, especially from Italy. Um, we've talked about this in a previous video about Italians and Argentina. And because Italy was in um, a pretty bad economic and political state at the time, uh, in the second half of the 1800s, um, there were a lot of Italians who came here to Argentina. So much so that like, um, uh, more than more than 50% of people here in Argentina have some Italian ancestry and it's also one of the reasons why like if you go and you get Argentine food it's very similar to Italian food there's lots of pasta there's lots of pizza there's um, I don't know just a lot of a lot of Italian influences here Tubantia. Look at this big old ship. Tubantia. Let's see why this thing is important. Transatlantico Tubantia belonged to the real Lloyd Holland company from Amsterdam. Came in 1914 to 1916. Oh, it was, oh, it was sunk by a uh, German submarine during the First World War, and 197 passengers. Is that right? No. Yeah. Well. It's a very nice looking ship. I mean, a model of a ship. But unfortunately, I think it was sunk by a submarine in World War I. Here, I guess, is like you can listen 
on the headset to uh, people's stories, different immigrants to Argentina. That's really cool. Photos here, early early 20th century photos. It's really cool. Now, of course, I mentioned the there was a big boom of, um, of like European immigration back in the late 1800s. But of course, like there's immigration up in through the the 20th century, 1900s as well. That's like where all these pictures are from. They have like lots of documents here too. Different like looks like tickets, yeah. Biglietto di embarco. This is Italian. This is an Italian. You see that? Navigazione generale italiano. I mean, that's, I don't know, I have to remember how to pronounce Italian. I used to speak a little Italian. Not anymore. Lista General de Pasajeros, República Argentina. These are all like people's immigration papers with like their fingerprints. There's like, <laughs> this is interesting. So there's religion, right? And then like how tall they were, color of their hair, color of their eyes, um, color of their skin. And then also nose there's a section of classification for nose which is interesting over here some of the like advertisements for the different sh um, like sailing lines the white star line the infamous white star line Infamous because the Titanic Oh look at this, this is great Cross section of what one of these ocean liners would look like Cargo holds down here here where they're like keeping meat and like butchering and different types of food here's like super super steerage class where everybody's just like in bunk beds like packed next to each other slightly up in class you get your own room but still sleeping in bunk beds it's I guess what second class or maybe third class and then up here first class you get your own private cabin no bunk beds up here all the dining rooms ballrooms crazy this is cool yeah I guess if you were down here in like steerage class you just all pack into this little, like, cafe here in the middle to eat. Or just, like, eat in your bunk. I wonder, I wonder which class you had to be ticketed in to be able to get into these dining rooms. Probably first class. That's really cool.
these are some of the, I guess this is what the bunks were in like steerage class, maybe. Or maybe this is like, they'd have people stay here in, uh, in quarantine and immigration. I know that people sometimes would have to stay in quarantine in immigration for a certain amount of time before they were let into the country. Another picture from like early 1900s. Man, must have been a rough trip. A rough trip. You could tell it's a rough trip, man. Some of these people look like they've been through it for sure. That one, the one woman right there, got the big smile, like that attitude. Yeah, these. Those those bunks we saw must have been here. stuff. Here's like a, a little top, a little spinny top toy. Camera. I guess this is like stuff people brought with them. Nineteen fifty two guide for immigrants in Argentina, El Emigrante in Argentina. That's really cool. Some more like documents passports from where is this from looks like Italy yeah that's in is that Italian uh, tanto yeah Repubblica Italiana this one's Italian for sure I think that's Italian too. This one's Italian. I mean, it would make sense. During this period, most of the immigrants were from Italy. Oh, look at that. Old money. Sedulas. Sedulas like the national ID. Here's some 20th century photos also. These look a little more recent than some of the other ones we saw. Just based on like how people are dressed and like the quality of the photo too there's some Jewish immigrants here like we mentioned there's a pretty sizable Jewish population um, in in Argentina some more here did a whole video about that. We went to the uh, Templo Libertad, which is a really, really nice, big, beautiful um, Jewish temple that has like a museum in there as well. Very cool video. Check that one out. Look at these. I guess these are the entrance, all the old entrance logs. Maybe, yeah. The different ports of entry, right? Puerto Iguazu. That's up by, uh, you know, like Brazil. Up in the up in the rainforest. Big, big, famous uh, waterfall there, Iguazu Falls. San Carlos de Bariloche. That's the port down, um, that would be people coming like across from, from Chile, 
right? San Carlos de Bariloche, Bariloche is over in the uh, in the west side of the country, south. Really beautiful. We have what are these? These are like international like identification cards. I think. What does this say? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, first name, last name, date of birth, place of birth, nationality, occupation, where... Dynexio and Navichua, that's, like, a address, like, where you're staying. Pasajeros que llegan for arriving passengers... For leaving passengers, passport number, date and place. Yeah, so these are like records of people, immigration coming to uh, coming to Argentina back in the day. This is what you'd fill out, and then they'd file it in the thing. Now everything is just all computerized. They don't even stamp your passport when you come to Argentina. They just take your thumbprint, take a picture of you, and. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Ask you a couple questions sometimes. Then you go. I will say. I was actually a little disappointed by that. First time I arrived here in Buenos Aires. I was kind of like really, really over prepared. I thought they were going to ask me like all kinds of questions. And I had like, um, you know, I had like, my Spanish wasn't as good back then gotten a lot better and I had practiced like all the uh, the answers to the questions that I thought they were going to ask me you know like how long are you going to stay um, you know where are you staying do you have an exit ticket and all these all these things just all these questions they were going to ask me they didn't ask me anything <laughs> they basically they asked me where I was staying and that's it and like <laughs> they didn't even stamp my passport I was a little disappointed this is the art exhibit Cool. It's like a cool mural here. It looks like a hand painted. This is the whole exhibit, by the way. This. It's not very big, but it's very cool. Looks like some more uh, places where you can listen to interviews. These are like audio visual exhibits, which is pretty cool. But there's like a headset, you know, you can listen to to go along with it. I'm not gonna listen to it. It'd be hard to like I mean maybe I could put the headset over the camera, but like by the microphone, that'd be kinda weird. I don't know if that would work. Here's some I guess clothes that I don't know where these are from are these like people's lost and found clothes from here at the immigration office immigration services I don't know it's interesting though these are oh these are recipes I think yeah, let's go. Cool. Here's some recipes from different countries. There's a shepherd's pie recipe, delicious. Spinach, imifuno, ene, stewe pap. Auntie's favorite recipe. Fish cakes, famous fish cakes, 35 Stone Street, District 6, Hanover Street Fish Market. And 
here we have a map of I don't know where this is a map of Where is this a map of? Let's see. Uh, that doesn't tell us. Oh. South Africa? I think this is a city in South Africa. There we go. That's about it. Back out where we started. The museum is very, uh, it's very cool. It's not very big. There's not a lot in there to see, but what there is to see is, um, is really cool, really interesting. The old photographs. And the old like documents, people's uh, passports, and like the the old tickets from the uh, the ocean liners. That stuff's really cool. <laughs> that's like that's like a bygone era kind of cool, you know. Um, I think it's it, it reminds me kind of of uh, I go back down went down the stairs. It reminds me kind of of like the same vibe that we got <clears throat> from the uh, railroad museum which is actually really close by here by the way the immigration museum and the railroad museum are basically like within walking distance of each other so if you wanted to you could probably come see both um on on the same day uh the link to the video about the railroad museum by the way in the description but gives me the same vibe you know this sort of like uh remnants of a bygone era the golden age of train travel, the golden age of like ocean liners crossing the Atlantic, when that was really the only way you could do it. You know, air travel is great, of course. It's very convenient. You can hop on a plane in New York and be in London in, you know, less than what, in like what, eight, eight, nine hours, something like that. But, kind of lose the experience that experience of like taking a long uh, journey on an ocean liner that takes weeks and that experience is like going to be it's, it's harder and harder to come by right I don't even know if it's is it even possible are there still ocean liners that you can take to cross from uh, from the Americas over to like Europe or over to Africa I know there are cruises that you can take, of course, still. But that experience is, I think it's very different, right? A cruise these days is basically just like a giant floating shopping mall and amusement park and a hotel. You just never really sort of like, I don't know. It, it, it doesn't seem like the same experience to me. Head back outside here. Like I said though, sort of the remnants of a bygone era, right? It's one of those things where you kind of wish, at least I do, kind of wish I could go back in time and, uh, you know, like see what it was like back then. Look at this big mural here, this big photo, right, that they've put on the gate. You know, what was it like back then? I mean, honestly, if you're really, if you're really honest about it, we all romanticize those times. Those were pretty rough times. Like that picture of all those immigrants, like, sitting in the immigration center up there, the big one, with everybody looking at the camera, and they all just look, like, totally worn out, right? Bare feet, like, dirty, they look tired, they look hungry. Is that one woman who's smiling at the camera? You know, like, <laughs> that is probably more likely what the experience was. And like, 
if you actually were able to talk to someone from that era and you were like, man, you know, talking romantically about how it was such a, must have been such a cool time to experience, they probably would have been like, bro, do you have any food? <laughs> so maybe, maybe we romanticize things like that. I know I do, but still something about it. You wish you could, you know, experience it, right? I don't know. Anyway, I think it was really cool coming to see this place um, down here at the immigration building, the museum. It's a cool little um, little spot that I don't think a lot of people know about. And uh, thanks once again to uh, Charlie XP, our buddy, for telling us about it. Um, link to Charlie's YouTube channel down in the description, of course. And um, yeah, it was, it was it was cool. It was cool to come see this. I like coming to see things like this that like are off the beaten path and like maybe not a lot of people know about. It's one thing to go like Puerto Madero, which is like right down down uh, well, on the other side of this naval building, down there a few blocks. Puerto Madero, big touristy area like. There are a lot of touristy, really well-known places, and I like going to visit those too. And some of the videos um, that we've done, and some of the videos that we're going to do, they're they're from those places, and those are great. But if you only go to those places, you miss out on a lot of things. Um, you miss out on a lot of uh, a lot of really interesting things in, in a country. So I like coming to places like this that are a little less well-known as well. Anyway, I've rambled on for enough time, I think, to make a video here. So, I hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, stay tuned. Plenty more videos coming from here in Argentina. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.